Okay, so now we're going to make the cover. We're going to make two kinds of covers. We're going to make a hard cover and a soft cover. For the hard cover, I'm going to be using this. It's a cereal box that I have already cut to the height that I want. And basically, I got the height by placing my text block onto my cardboard. And I'm just kind of making sure it's slightly higher than the text, the book block. So it's just, it got some margins at the top and bottom. And then we're going to get the length. And again, you're going to place your text block onto your cardboard like this. Maybe it'll be easier to see from the side like that. So like that. You're going to have a little margin here at the forage. You can make sure you're straight as you can get. Like that, you can put your weight down. You can make a mark here by the spine. And that's where the book is going to fold. It's going to make the first joint basically here and then we're going to fold it over here again. And then it's going to have the second cover. Or the front cover, the back cover. So once you've done that, you can take your text block, you hold it together like this, and you place it by the marking for the... So this is the front cover. It's going to be the spine, like that. Make your mark there. And then you place your text block at your second mark. And you make the final marking for the final length here. So, there. And what you can do, if you want to make sure everything is correct, is that you can measure this length here. And then make sure you measure the same length on the other side of the spine. But text blocks tend to kind of follow their own dimensions a little. So sometimes it's better to use this instead of going by the ruler. All right. So when you've done that, you're going to get your ruler. So either this or this. Or both. Why not? Okay, and you're going to draw a line here by your marking and you can just move it along and what I'm doing here is I'm using my triangular ruler to lie on the straight edge here so that I get a straight 90 degree line there but you don't have to do that and then the final one this is going to be where we cut off the length for the cover so like that oops And you get your cutting tool, if it's a rotary cutter or a scalpel or a mat cutter. And again, it's easier if you just let the knife run and not try to cut it all off in one go. And cut it off kind of. There you go. Okay. And you can use your ruler or anything else you've got, or you can use um, the back of your blade and just very lightly score into the line where you're going to fold. And that's just going to make it kind of that length. So use your ruler and just fold up like that. And then that's the front cover, so this is the spine, we're going to fold again, make it a back cover.
You can take your text block and you can check if it fits. Mm. Well, that fits better actually. That fits better. Mm. To me, I think the cover is a bit too tall. Could adjust it like this, but I still think that is too much margins for this type of book. So I'm gonna make it a little, a little uh, shorter. And you can also look and see if there's any side of the text block that fits better with any side. So looking like this, for instance, this mar margin will be too long because the Text forage is slightly uneven, so this margin will be too long. But if I turn it over like that, that fits much better. And so if you have any kind of preferred sides to your text block like that and to your cover, you can just do... Um, is you can just draw like a matching symbol here. So if you have your X here, which I have there, you can make an X there. And then you can make your O here, and you can make an O here. And that just means that you can match the correct side to side. So I'll just shorten this a little. Just a little. Right, that's that's better. I like that better. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to cut the slits for the lacings. And the way we're going to do that is by our sewing stations, we're going to cut a slit here on the join and a slit here on the join, and that's where they're going to come out through. And then we're going to lace them back in by cutting another slit here. Uh, further up onto the cover and we're going to do that front and back. So if you have your markings, if you matched up side to side, you can place your text block into your cover. You can put your weight on. You can use your pen and basically just hold the text block up against the cover and you mark where the sewing stations are on the join there. And you can do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so then you have, so you've got eight markings here on the inside of your cover. And you can make them a little clearer to yourself, like this. And if you want to, you can make your folds a bit sharper, like this. And if you want to check that you have your folds straight, instead of trying to match edge to edge, you match top edge to top edge. And that's kind of how you know that you have that one side of it will be straight, at least. Okay.
Okay, so the thing we're going to do now is we're going to cut the slits where we're going to lace the case through. And this is one I made previously. And you can see here you cut slits on the joint of the spine and also up a little on the cover. And that's where you lace your sewing stations or your sewing supports through. They come out and they go back in again and that kind of creates the join um, between the text block and the cover. So what you do is that you have your cover and you're going to do, going to mark five mils, five millimeters from the joints, from the spine fold here. So you can, if you want to have your laces, like more of them visible, you can put the second slit higher up. But I usually do 5 mil. I think that that works well. So, yeah, using your ruler, and you butt that straight up to the spine fold, so you have it like this. So you kind of get the correct distance. And you measure 5 millimeters. And you mark out 5 millimeters with your pen, pencil. So again, you butt your ruler up to straight to the spine fold there on the other side of the and you measure five millimeters and you make a mark and then you draw a straight line on the inside of the cover so you can use a square ruler like this and you use to get the line straight and you draw a line just where you put the 5 mil mark and you do that on both sides of the cover, so front cover, back cover. So, front cover, back cover. Like that. So then you have four lines, you have the lines from the joints where the book folds into the spine folds and then you have two lines on the sides of that and you can see the slits here that we're going to cut. So you take your text block and if you have like a side that goes with the side you match that up. So I have the O symbol here, I match it to the O symbol there. I put it into the text block so I put the cover on and I look that I'm happy with it and then Holding the text block up against the spine, like that. So the spine is butted up quite closely to the text block. You mark on with the pencil on either side of the sewing support. So you mark there, and there, and there, and there. So, show for the camera can't really see the sewing supports here unfortunately but you mark either side of them there 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 and there and you can also do the same markings to transfer them up to the line that you made five minutes on the cover so you transfer the same markings parallel up here to the line and then of course match your book up and you do the same thing on the other side here. So you mark on either side of your sewing support. And that's where you're going to cut. You're going to cut between those two markings. You're not going to cut anywhere else because that's going to cut through the join. So you just want to cut between your two markings. So you have your marks and you use your ruler. And just cut through the board, through the marks like this. So you cut first, I like to cut on the joint and then you transfer up to the second line. And you cut your second mark there and you cut your second there. So that you have then 
uh, four slits in each cover where you're going to lace out and then back in again. And you do the same thing here on the other cover side of the cover. So you line your ruler up with your marks, cut in between the marks there, and you follow up to second line there. And you make your cut. And you make your cut. And then we lace through. And when we lace through, I usually find it handy to cut a corner off here of one of the sewing supports. And so they become a bit sort of triangular. And that sort of makes it easier to lace through. And you can do that with your sisters is the easiest, but what are all my sisters now, you ask? Okay, so you check that you have your symbols matched up, so you have your O here and your O here, if that matters to you, otherwise you don't have to worry about it. And then you lace through the first ones, and here you sometimes have to just kind of work the opening a little to make sure that it's... It works and it's best if you need to recut or cut wider to cut from the outside in because that means any material is going to be pushed into the inside of the cover and you won't have to see it from the outside. So you work through sewing supports. So like this, and you pull them through so that you have, yeah, they come up, poke up through the joint here in two places. And then you go to the other side and you do the same thing. And like I said, it can be helpful to just sort of Work the opening a little. And you pull them through like that. So your result is this. Your sewing supports are all sticking out through the slits that you've cut here on the joint or the spine folds. And then you're going to lace them through the second cuts that you made up on the cover. So you're going to go back into the cover again, or back under the cover. Like I said, you might have to work them a little, just to make sure you can come through. And when you lace through, be careful so that you don't tear through your slits, because this is paper and board, so it's technically possible for that to happen. So you just work them through and then you pull. So you end up with this. You can't really see that. So you have your board, you have your slits, and you poke the end of the sewing support through like that. You have the slit here. And you work it through, like that, yeah, like that, and you grab the inside here, and you pull through, and grab the inside, and you pull through, and there you are, there is, the board is, the cover is now attached to the deck spot, like that, and here's your book. And you can write in it. And you will notice that it's like if you've ever seen old books, sometimes you have to cut them open when you were reading them. And it's the same thing here. So you'll have these, when you flick through, you'll still have these bits um, of paper that are still attached inside of the book. And you can just use a knife or, you know, something to, a paper knife or to just cut that open as you need it. 
and yeah if you want to have like steadier boards if you have want to have thicker board what you can do is you can cut cardboard just to this size and paste them onto the boards like that and that will give you like a sturdier board other than that i think this works fine and thank you for participating and for making a book with us.